Brothers and sisters, good morning. So this past week, as I was praying with the readings, especially uh, our gospel passage for today, there was one word in particular that kept coming to mind. And it's kind of been a buzzword for the last few years that you might uh, be familiar with. It's FOMO. FOMO, F-O-M-O. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. It stands for the fear of missing out, FOMO. And this is a real thing that's defined as uh, the feeling of fear or anxiety, usually caused by posts on social media, that something interesting or exciting is going on and I'm not a part of it, or I don't know that it's going on. Uh, so I feel like I'm missing out on something um, and I'm constantly driven to check my phone, look for updates, see what's going on so that I can get the latest information and be in the know. And I think we, we can all relate to this to some degree uh, in this social media kind of world and this 24-7 uh, world that we live in as well, this 24-7 news media world that we live in. And at first it may seem just like an annoying habit, but FOMO and constantly checking our phones actually has some pretty negative consequences in life, research has shown. One of which is a fear of commitment. So why is this? Why do we have a fear of commitment? Well, you see, if we scratch the surface of this uh, fear of missing out, we see that it's really based on a deeper belief about freedom. So it's saying that my freedom is all about my ability to choose. Right? It's, it's not necessarily what I choose, that doesn't matter. It's just that I have as many options as possible to choose from. And if any of those options are limited or I'm restricted in any way, well, then I'm not free. And I'm missing out on something that I should really have. And sadly, I think we see this concept of freedom, this being able to choose whatever you want, in the uh, Roe Ro versus Wade decision that was uh, done 45 years ago to legalize abortion. And in the midst of all this, I think it's good for us to ask ourselves, as Christians, as Catholics, is culture's concept of freedom and happiness really making us truly happy or truly free? Because it seems like just the opposite has happened as we deal with things like a fear of missing out and a strong fear of commitment. So why do I bring all this up? Well, in our gospel today, I think we see a very different picture. We don't see a fear of missing out. We don't see a fear of commitment. Instead, we have Jesus giving us the cure for these things, the remedy for these things in our lives. How does he do this? Well, if you look at the first words that Jesus speaks in Mark's gospel today, he says this. These are the first recorded words of Jesus in St. Mark's gospel. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. So another way that we might say this is, this is the time of freedom, the time of freedom of truth, the freedom of knowing that you are loved by God and the freedom of being able to lay down your life in that same love for love of another person. You see, Jesus is telling us that in order to be truly happy and free, we must place our trust in him. Our choices must be grounded in the truth. And Jesus is the truth. He is love itself. So in order to be happy and free, we must follow him entirely with our lives. But to do that, we first have to follow his other instructions. Repent and believe in the gospel. So our hearts and our minds must be cured of these fears and insecurities that drive us to sinful and selfish decisions. Fears that tell us that we are unwanted, that we are unlovable, that we aren't good. Fears that keep us closed in on ourselves, afraid to commit our lives to someone else. And the word repent comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means a profound conversion of heart and mind. And thankfully, we are given this grace of conversion at our baptism. We are given the antidote we need to become sons and daughters of God and to become saints. And that journey to sainthood, that journey to ultimate freedom and ultimate happiness, starts now with our yes to that gift that we've been given at baptism. But like any medicine, there are times that we are resistant to taking it, right? We sometimes don't want to say yes to God's call that he's placed in our hearts because maybe we don't think that it'll be worth it or we think that it's going to ask too much of us or that it's going to be too difficult. 
But the saints, again, show us what a yes to God can really bring about. Again, let's go back to our gospel passage. I think we see this very clearly. St. Mark tells us that Jesus is passing by the Sea of Galilee, and he sees Simon and Andrew. And what does he do? He says to them, come after me. Come after me. And what does Simon and Andrew do? Scripture tells us they abandoned their nets and followed him. And then Jesus proceeds, and he sees James and John, and he says the same thing, come after me. And what do they do? Immediately, they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and they followed Jesus. So we see these men embracing their life's vocation, saying yes to God's call to be his apostles. They left everything and committed their lives to Jesus. I mean, I think you can just imagine their family and friends in the, in the days and weeks and months that followed that decision, saying to them, what are you doing? Are you crazy? You're going to leave your, this, this trade that's been in our family for generations just to follow this man that you know nothing about? How are you going to live? How are you going to make money? How are you going to provide for yourself? What about all the plans that you had? You're going to throw all that away? And then James and John. Scripture tells us that they left their father while he was still sitting in the boat. They just walked away from their family to follow Jesus. That means they abandoned their source of identity, their home, their standing in the community, their security. Simon and Andrew, James and John said no to every other option in life in order to follow Jesus wholeheartedly. And the world is completely changed because of them. All because of what seemed like the slightest invitation, come and follow me. And for each of us, Jesus says the same thing. Come and follow me. Entrust your life to me if you want to experience the freedom and the happiness that you were made for. And we hear his voice speaking to us in the scriptures, like our gospel today. In the teaching of the church, we receive his very life in the sacraments, the sacrament of the Eucharist that we will celebrate in a few minutes. In prayer, in the silence of our hearts, we encounter Jesus' call in the people that we meet on a daily basis, in those conversations, in those encounters. These are all ways that we stay grounded in the truth and in love, especially in the face of resistance that we experience in our lives as we live out our faith in the public scene. And this is so important. We need this truth and love when people look at us like we're crazy. Like we're crazy for speaking up for the unborn. Or we're crazy for wanting to save sex for marriage. Or we're crazy for even wanting to be married in the church in the first place. Or we're crazy for wanting to go to seminary and become a priest. Or to commit our lives to uh, a religious vocation as a religious sister. People think we're crazy for that. But it takes eyes of faith and trust to see that it's all for love and it's all so worth it. The saints also help us to see that. Simon and Andrew, James and John, here we have four men who gave themselves entirely to God, their yes, to following his call. And they made it clear that following Jesus, there is no FOMO, there's no fear of missing out. They missed out on nothing. It's all an illusion. These apostles lived in true freedom and in true happiness. And we see this most clearly in their response to the difficulties that they encountered in life for the faith, when they were thrown in jail, when they were beaten, when they were put in exile, when they were even killed for the faith, when they were made martyrs. None of these men died cursing their murderers. No. Instead, these saints died asking God to forgive these killers because they don't know what they're doing. These saints lived and died happy and free. And they're all in heaven cheering us on right now, telling us it is so worth it. It is so worth it. So my brothers and sisters, this is the time of fulfillment. This is the time of freedom. You were not made for fear. You were made for greatness and you were made for freedom. To know that you are personally loved by God, this call that he reveals to us by placing his very life in our hearts and saying, come and follow me. 
through the grace of our baptism, through the grace of the Eucharist we are about to celebrate, through the holy men and women who have gone before us, cheering us on, interceding for us. May we all repent and believe, abandon our nets, our fears, and come and follow Jesus. Amen.